Okay. Well, hello, and thank you for joining GoGrid's APR webinar. My name is Debbie, and I'm one of the customer success managers here at GoGrid. And with me today is Zephyr. Zephyr is our technical support manager, and he's very familiar with the API. Zephyr, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure, Debbie. Thanks. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm the technical support manager, and I'm going to introduce GoGrid API today. Um, I'll let Debbie start off with the agenda. Great. Okay. Thanks, Zephyr. Let's go into our agenda, and today we're going to be covering the introduction to GoGrid API, why, when, and how to use the API, a demonstration on how to create an API call, and address any questions from our listeners today. As you may see in your box when you sign in, that on the lower half you'll have a portion where your questions can be answered, so go ahead and type your questions in at any time, and we'll go ahead and address it on the end of our webinar. Okay, so Zephyr, why don't we go ahead and cover the introduction to the GoGrid API. Thanks, Debbie. So um, I assume that everyone here knows about APIs, and, uh, your, and uh, the scope of this is going to be to introduce uh, what GoGrid API is and how it can be used, what are the features in here, and uh, uh, what's the difference between version 1 and version 2 API that basically the, uh, we started with version 1, uh, and the most current version is version 2, and I assume I would recommend that everybody use version 2, because it's uh, based on REST uh, interface, and that pretty much makes life easier when querying uh, our API. Uh, so let's dive right into it. I wanted to show you uh, how to generate an API key Great. and uh, show you how fast it will be. Let's go ahead and go over to our portal, Zephyr. Sure. And we'll go ahead and get started here. Yeah. So here's a typical view of your GoGrid portal. Uh, you have your grid view where all the servers are listed right now. Um, all you have to do is go to your My Accounts section on the top and click on the API Keys tab. This is where you manage your API key. Uh, as you can see, we already have one read-only key enabled over here. I'm going to just do a quick API key setup. Um, this is uh, the interface for the API key. Uh, as you can see, there are different roles. Uh, read-only, system user, billing user, super user. This pretty much defines the scope of our API. You can uh, create different modules to uh, specific to different areas. Like, for example, a super user is pretty much like God. He can do anything and delete, add, delete, remove users, and uh, at the same time add any kind of uh, servers or anything. Billing users, if you restrict some module that only queries invoice and uh, their billing-related questions, they, they can pretty much query the API using this billing user. Uh, and that's how I would recommend that you use it. I mean, for each module with specific functions, they should have. They should be restricted by their own keys. Um, enable, disable is simple. Uh, you can uh, enable a key. At, at the same time, I would recommend that you keep an archive of old keys just in case your new module stops or uh, stops working. It's always best to go back and retrace your steps. And so, uh, if you're done with one API key and you want to just change to another one, make sure you just disable it so that you have an archive of it. Uh, let's get go ahead and create an API key. This is a shared secret that we'll use. I'm simply having an API webinar. I'll save this. And that's it. You're ready to query our API. Wow, that's, that's really quick there. Remember? Exactly. Uh, I'm going to do a quick edit and make this a super user. And now you can see there is a API key already generated for us. I'm going to save this. Uh, in order to manage this, you can always delete your API keys from right here. It will prompt you. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and cancel this because we're going to use this to do a brief demo of our API tools. Um, let's go back to our presentation and see what 
connection. Great. So here at our next slide would be why, when, and how to use API. Stephen, would you like to cover these uh, points for us? Yeah. Um, they're pretty uh, self-explanatory, um, uh, taking control of your infrastructure, uh, running too many servers. For example, if you, if you have a huge set of servers and you want to uh, control them, it's very hard to control them from uh, within our global portal. This gives you, the API gives you the control to pretty much either restart, launch new servers, or delete uh, old servers as and when you need it. You can integrate it to your own portal, set your own security setup, and that secures uh, your infrastructure setup. Um, I'm going to go ahead and show you some of the API libraries and tools that we use, uh, that we have at our disposal. Um, we have a very detailed uh, wiki for API, and uh, as you can see, you, there are various languages that you can use to uh, query our API. It, it doesn't really matter which language you use. Um, the these days, Python is being used by almost everyone. Um, as you can see, uh, this is a, a simple Python script with a Python example. These example scripts help you uh, to set up your own uh, scripts and be up and running. Uh, these are API methods that you can use. You can query the job list. If you've got load balancers, you can query the list of load balancers, add them, edit them, delete them. Or uh, the most frequently used one is query the server's list, uh, add them, edit them, or delete or power down your uh, servers that are within the grid. Um, a very useful reference guide is right here. As you can see, this this is a this is a very uh, detailed reference guide for your programmers who are setting up your API object, and uh, it allows you to um, access all the objects that are available. Uh, for the query and at the same time all the parameters that go with those. This is, uh, I call this a cheat sheet because it, it's really helpful if you are developing, actively developing an application that will use our API. This is really handy tool. You'll be able to print this out and, you, yeah. and utilize it as, as you go along. Yeah, it's in PDF format and uh, you just have to print it and start using it. Great. Yeah. The, um, Let's do a quick review of our API tool. Just wanted to show you how this uh, tool works. You can go to apigobridcom slash tools. As you can see right here, it's, in, uh, it's a secure link, so it's HTTPS, apigobridcom slash tools. And this is what you get. Uh, this is a very easy to use tool. Uh, it allows you to test your account API keys and uh, the best thing about this is it allows you to uh, check if, if you're running into any issues, you can come here, do run a quick query, and it will simply help you uh, uh, troubleshoot. So we're going to just do a quick copy and paste of Kind of like a health check, so to speak, for your? Yeah, yeah. So, for example, you're running into issues with your API calls, and you're wondering if you have it set up right. Just come here and test your API keys. If everything is working fine here, then uh, there must be something going on with your uh, script. So we're going to copy the shared uh, secret, and we're going to paste it into the secret field. Uh, what I've chosen is uh, uh, these are all the methods that are available to you. Uh, same thing that we showed in our uh, cheat sheet right here. Simply use the format. We support XML, JSON, and CSV format. Build the request, send the request. I'm currently querying for all the servers list, and there it is. It lists out all servers that are currently set up in our GoGet portal. Uh, let me show you where it is. Um, in our grid, right here, is where all the servers are. So these are the servers that we have queried just now, and they have come out in an XML format. I can do the same thing with, as a JSON output, 
rebuild the request, it changes. And this is, the, this is what I was talking about with the REST uh, API. Send the request, and it's, it outputs the JSON. Oh, that's great. Yeah. That, that's a real helpful tool. Yes, it is. So uh, that pretty much covers our API introduction. Um, um, we have a very detailed wiki. Anything and everything that you need to know about our API is on our wiki. Uh, if you run into any trouble uh, or problems, uh, all you have to do is uh, open our support case, and we are here 24-7 to help you out. That's great. Well, thank you so much, Zephyr. And as, as Zephyr mentioned, too, uh, the wiki is available. You can also go into your portal in your grid view, and there's a link directly right there. So if you're already in your portal, you need to help. You can go strictly to it right there on your front page. So let's go ahead and uh, finish up for today. And I don't think we have any questions from our listeners. And we have a question. And basically, so Zephyr, our question today is, what is the cost for the API? Uh, there is no cost. So, wow. yeah, so API queries uh, are free. It uh, helps us um, if you're using our API because you're, you're in more control of your assets. Uh, you have less questions to ask because you can simply query our API and get the answers yourself on your infrastructure. That's excellent, excellent. Okay, let's see if we have any more questions today. And we do, we have one more question. Is there a limit on API calls, Zephyr? Uh, there is absolutely no limit on any queries, uh, the number of queries you can do. We do have checks. For example, if your script runs into a loop, uh, infinite loop, and it starts querying, uh, sending us too many queries, uh, it will get locked. And in, if that happens to you, just give us a call, and we'll make sure that lock is lifted. It, uh, it should reset itself within 24 hours, because it, it only blocks you for that day. Yeah, because you may run out of your quota for that day, but that quota is only uh, hypothetically set up when it detects a rogue script querying us uh, for the same thing uh, again and again. That's fantastic. Yeah. Well, thank you, Zephyr. I appreciate that. And it looks like that's the end of our questions uh, this morning. Let's go ahead and go over what we have here for you for contact uh, for our go grid support. As I mentioned before, we do have the wiki, which is available through our website or directly through your portal. We also have the GoGrid blog, which gives you updated information continuously, as well as our GoGrid Help Center. This is a new tool that's been uh, implemented. It's called the gogrid.force.com. Basically, you can search what you're looking for by a keyword, say user, and, how, and what user roles and how to add. Um, quite simple. As well as the government's before, you can call us anytime. Our uh, support team is available 24-7, 365 days a year. And it's free. That is free. You can't beat that. <laughs> And if you need additional assistance to, from today, if you, if you have any more questions, uh, you can always uh, get a hold of our customer service team at customerservice at gogrid.com, or feel free to log into our live chat, which is also available through your portal. Um, that's a really easy way to get your questions answered. So thank you for joining us today. Um, if you enjoyed our webinar, uh, go ahead and please feel free to join up uh, our next webinar for next Wednesday, which is on October 16th. And on that webinar, we'll be covering the GoGrid firewall service versus hardware firewall. Um, you'll see the link here as you found this last one where you can go ahead and sign up. So I hope you join us for that particular webinar. And Zephyr, thanks so much for joining us today. I really appreciate you taking your time. Thanks, Debbie. Right. Thanks, everyone, for joining us today. Thank you, and everybody have a wonderful day.